Hello, Footbridge enthusiasts. I have today another presentation for you with David Knight from Cake Industries, which is a production company in uh, London. And this is about a project done with Arup. And yeah, let me just hand it over to David and uh, he can tell you more about it. Well, thank you, Nicholas. Uh, it's great to come and have a have a chat with you. Um, I'm here to talk about a project that we completed this year with uh, Tonkin Lu as architects and Arab. Um, it's a fascinating, tiny, tiny little project um, with lots of facets to it. But uh, there's there's a couple that I want to pick up today. It's important to to talk a little bit about the history of where it is. Uh, it's in uh, a park in South London, um, uh, in Crystal Palace. Uh, Crystal Palace is named for uh, the Joseph Paxton um, building uh, built in 1851 for the Great Exhibition. Uh, and as we as we know, sort of uh, a high point of, uh, of innovation in architecture and engineering. Um, and the park itself was built around this uh, building when it was moved from Hyde Park. Uh, and the, the, the park really became a sort of pleasure gardens for and a tourist attraction for, for people. Um, as part of that, uh, one of the displays was um, uh, life-size sculptures of dinosaurs. Um, Paleontology had just uh, really started as a, as a science. And these sculptures were the first that uh, first bits of edutainment or um, uh, educational uh, uh, and ed entertainment for, for the masses about dinosaurs. Um, they were built by um, a sculptor called Benjamin Waterhouse Ho uh, Hawkins, um, and they still exist today. So these are uh, the, the, the dinosaur sculptures. They're it, to modernize, quite odd, uh, but they represent the best of the knowledge of uh, the, the 1850s about dinosaurs. Today, we know that dinosaurs, or we think we know that dinosaurs look slightly different. Um, these are maintained by a local charity, the Friends of Crystal Palace Dinosaurs, um, and being 150, 170 uh, years old, they are um, deteriorating their concrete shell. Um, or concrete structures, um, mainly shells with, with internal formwork. And they're slowly cracking up and breaking and they need a lot of care and love and maintenance to keep them there. Uh, and uh, this whole project is about uh, providing that access. They sit on um, an island uh, in a lake, um, uh, an island that is arranged uh, around the idea of dinosaur evolution from coming out of the sea through to uh, through to the later uh, sculptures, which look, which look at mammal development and so on, but this, the, the the island nature of the sculptures is is both a, a help and a hindrance when it comes to maintenance. Firstly, it keeps tries to keep people, the public, away from the sculptures themselves, but also it's difficult for people to get onto the island to to check and maintain um, uh, the objects. Uh, and this is really where the, the bridge project came in. Um, there was a proposal to, to put in a bridge uh, to access the island. Um, it had to be, um, uh, it had to restrict access. Uh, and there were lots of ways of thinking about restricting access. But uh, ultimately, we decided that it would be a, a swing bridge, uh, a bridge that sat on a central bearing um, and then uh, accessed uh, the, the banks on either side um, when it was in its service position. And then it could be rotated by hand uh, into into place or out of place um, to to limit or or, or allow access. Um, it's only small; it's about uh, nine meters long, um, uh, and it was a collaboration, as I say, between Tonkin Lewis Architects, um, Arab as structural engineers, and ourselves, Cake Industries, as uh, as fabrication uh, a main contractor and installation uh, works. Tonkin Lu really wanted this to be a sculptural object uh, and talked a lot about the evolution of, of dinosaurs and bones and how, how we could reflect that in what we were creating. Um, but it was also a charitable um, project. It had to be very cheap. Um, it was uh, funded by crowdfunding from local residents um, and uh, ultimately uh, by generous donations of time from, from Arab and, um, and from ourselves and, and various other 
parties. So we were looking for something that sort of mimics the efficiency of nature. And, and this image of, of a fish skeleton sort of sparked a lot of ideas and really led us to a scheme um, and, a, and a way of working that I want to talk about today. The main movement, the main innovation, I suppose, is the idea of using flat steel sheets uh, and cutting them up in innovative ways and using that to generate form. And this, this core um, uh, process uh, sort of illustrated here um, it, it was, was the, main, the main step towards that. We took a steel sheet, we laser cut a comb out of it, so lots of, lots of fingers, uh, and then we folded that comb to create the geometry of the of the bridge. One um, one of the the tines of the cone is folded up to be the balustrade. One remains in the right place to be the bridge deck, and then one folds down to support the edge of the edge of the deck. And these are all um, computer cut from uh, a ten millimeter thick steel plate. Um, they are heated at the, the root of the bend with an oxyacetylene torch in our workshop, uh, as you can see here, to a, to a specified temperature. Uh, so it's, a, um, it's within the code limits for, for hot working um, and then bent by hand to, to form a, um, to, to create the geometry that we were looking for. And these elements then were assembled together um, slowly to create a form that uh, that mimicked that skeletal nature that we were we were looking for, and, and as you can see, the sort of sinusoidal nature of the, the edge beam um, enables us to create stability in the balustrade uh, as as the as the um, the balustrade posts walk backwards and forwards. You create a push pull uh, couple um, that will resist lateral loads from. Um, from crowds uh, and hence enables us to reduce the plate sizes to a minimum. So the entire structure was made from 10 millimeter thick plate steel um, uh, and, and ended up being relatively light. You can see it has a central um, triangular box section core that, that does the, the central beam dealing with torsion and so on. It sits on a central slowing ring bearing. Central box is also made of 10 millimeter steel? Or it is, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's all made of uh, it's a, it's a fully welded triangular section from ten millimeter steel, um, and then these deck edge pieces are attached to that and welded in place. And yes, that, that was fully assembled um, in our workshop in in southeast London, welded together, um, the deck put on, and you can start to see this form appearing in these images. And um, the real the other real joy of this was trying to create a a aesthetic finish, but a durable finish. Uh, and there was a lot of effort put into the design to make sure that this piece as, a, as an object was small enough to fit into a galvanizing bath. And we were able to dip the entire bridge in one piece into um, a large galvanizing bath uh, and, and galvanize the entire object. So that meant that in a very few operations, we ended up with a, um, with a scheme and with a, with a uh, uh, with an object that uh, is um, that suits the site, but also was cheap to, to fabricate. It sits on a quite a restricted site, lots of trees around, uh, and so it was, it was a spectacular event to lift, lift the piece into place uh, on a crane and set it down um, in the in the middle of the winter. As you can see, the water's very low; uh, it's been drained out um, to allow us access, uh, and it now sits amongst the sculptures and can be operated uh, by hand using, using a chain to pull it backwards and forwards. Um, and yes, I, I just want to uh, very simply say that's the, that's the scheme uh, and, and acknowledge that Tonkin, Lou and Arat put a, a lot of effort into this and, and, and us Cake Industries we, we, we had, a, had a fantastic time collaborating uh, with the team to, to show how these fabrication innovations could assist in, in actually creating a, um, a beautiful sculptural object. Yes, very nice. Uh, I really like the bridge actually. It's, um, it's very simple, but at the same time, extremely elegant. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, also intricate in terms of the, 
the undulating sides and all that. That's well, it's a um, one of the things that we like to say about it is that there's a mix of uh, digital technologies, obviously, to generating the models and the definitions for all the computer cutting, um, but also craft in this. And and one of the the things as a um, as a fabricator is is appreciating the craft and skill of your employees, the welders, the, the, the benders, the people who actually make this. Uh, and that process, the hand bending of all of the times and the, the fitting together was a very manual process. There was a craft in getting it right um, and getting it looking good as well as being precise. And, and that, you know, that, that has its own rewards, especially for the people that work on it. Yeah, I'm sure everyone will know take their children or friends to Hyde Park, and, or not Hyde Park, uh, Chris, Crystal, Crystal Palace, Palace Park. Park, yeah. And then um, show them their little gem of a bridge. Mm. That's very nice. Well, thank you very much for your presentation and for this uh, beautiful little bridge. And uh, I hope you get to do more of these kinds of projects. Thank you. It's great to share it with a wider audience.